Today's edition of Computer Club Lesson was recorded on April the 18th, 2016. Enjoy! Hello, welcome to Computer Club Lesson. This episode is brought to you by the Binary Guys. Okay, what shall we talk about today? Uh, last week we went through um, making um, making documents uh, on the computer, and for the most part, um, I talked about the three programs you would use: uh, the simple one, Notepad, uh, a little more. Um, robust a program. Uh, WordPad, a little more robust than that, is either um, um, Microsoft Office or LibreOffice. Okay, so we went through those. Um, I think today what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what can be done with um, with accounts that you have on the internet to store your documents. In other words, to store your documents in the cloud. Uh, there are some advantages and disadvantages. Advantage one, if you put a document on the cloud, you can get to it anywhere in the world that has a computer and an internet connection. You just log into your account, there are your documents. Um, the drawback of it is is that you can wind up with what we would call leakage of your documents. Let us just say you you were in Australia and you needed to get out a, a document you had on your account. So you go to a public place like a library and you log in to the library computer to your account, get your document, maybe even get permission to print it off and and all of that stuff. Um, unless you're really, really, really careful with the computer you're using, it leaves a trail. And um, unless you know how to make sure that it's not saving your password as you do this, um, and uh, saving your identity in the computer as it does this, other people can, and if they're of a mind to will, go and look at your stuff because they can log in as you because you've left your your authentic your authentication uh, credentials on that computer okay so that's a drawback yes does it make a difference on a lot of sites then it says do you want somebody to save this password that that is exactly so that's how that works that's if yeah I if never. yeah um, unless it's your computer if it's your computer Fine, but if it's somebody else's, say never. So that what they're talking about, uh, what that prompt is talking about is the local computer in front of you. It's not talking about yours at home. It's talking the one that's right in front of you this minute. So yes, it's a good idea if that prompt comes up to say never, if you're using a public computer. Um, with that said, um, it is really, really handy to have a place to save documents and pictures on the internet. Um, and the, the best place, the easiest place that I have found is our old pal, Google. You have an account, um, you have a place to put stuff, especially your mail, okay? If you use a Gmail account for your mail, you will never lose anything again. If your computer goes poo poo, when you get a new one, you just log into your Gmail account and everything is there. Um, as a technician, I don't have to worry about resetting your computer and losing all your mail. It can happen if it's on local, if it's in a local program. But if it's on the net, if it's, if it's in the cloud, 
I don't have to worry about that. Thank you so much. It makes my job a whole lot easier and things a lot safer for you. Um, and so just for the sake of argument here, I'll log into Gmail. Oh, now this is what where this will come in for you, Brenda. Okay, you log in. Uh, B B your username and then uh, your password. Oops. See it divine too. I was right away. Okay, from my username, but it needs my password. Now, password, never mind. <laughs> it's uh, a lot of times you will see this in a login situation. Um, stay signed in. If you're on a public computer, you uncheck that. Make sure it's clear. Because if you stay signed in, when you close down um, the web page and open it back up again, uh, you're signed in. And the next guy coming in behind you sees all your stuff. Okay? So. Uh, I'm going to leave that, but um, because I want to have this available on this computer, so I'm going to sign in, and it hasn't come up. But if it was, uh, I think I logged in on this before, so it it knows who I am. Um, so. It's not going to give me that prompt saying up in the up in the top corner over here. Do you want to save this password? It, it's already been done. So, but on a public computer, you would say no. Is that what is across the bottom? No, that's across the bottom. Bottom is uh, do I want to to use autocomplete? Someday we'll talk about autocomplete. Uh, it's it's a great idea that doesn't work. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it's great, but it doesn't work. Okay, so here's here's my Gmail account, and um, here's all of the the folders that I've made in Gmail. Okay, um, and I can look at more of them, much more of them down here. Um, I use an uh, I use uh, for for my purposes. Uh, I use a procedure called Inbox Zero, where I keep my inbox at zero. If I don't look at it for days, uh, I'll have 20, 40, 50, 60, 100 messages on it. So I keep it at Inbox Zero. It's just it's a procedure I use. Um, the one thing I want to look at here for you is the category All Mail. In Gmail, there is a category called All Mail, and um, what that does is it shows you all of the mail that you have kept and saved since forever. Okay, since forever. Uh, your sent mail, people that have emailed you, email that you have put off into folders. Okay, um, it's in there, in, all in all mail. And it's in there um, from um, it's not saving anything that I have deleted. You'll notice the last thing here is April 11th. Well, today's the 18th, so it's been a week since I have saved anything to a folder. Okay? Um, that's all mail. That's if you want to go looking for something that you know you have, that's the place to go. And so you open up all mail and you search from here. Okay? The name of someone who sent you an email a year ago. And it will bring up all of their mail. I'm going to put my brother's name in here and see what it, it gives me. Um, it's given me some couple of accounts here, but we'll use Gordon's TELUS account. And uh, there's all of the email from my brother. Okay. 
easy to find. Easy peasy. Um, that's why, and now Yahoo Mail will probably do much the same thing. Um, MSN Mail, Outlook Mail uh, will do much the same thing. And so you can just pick the one you like. Um, I like Google because I like their services. Um, the fact is, is that all of these, these services from Google and MSN and Yahoo and any others that you can name are all the same in this regard. That they are not reading your email, but they are browsing it for keywords. Uh, I had a client, um, still have her, she's a, she's a great lady, um, but she is um, a little bit frightened of the world around her. I set her up with a Gmail account for her to do some business with some friends of hers, and um, she was sending emails back and forth about um, setting up a trucking company for them. Uh, to do the legal work for a trucking, trucking company. She called me about a week after I'd set it up for her, all in a panic that she was starting to see advertisements for local trucking companies when she opened up her, her Google account. And I said, don't worry about it, please. It's not reading your email. It's perusing it for keywords. That's all. That's all. So you, you um, had words in your email about transportation, legal advice, um, where to buy trucks, um, how to get drivers, all of that. Okay. That's your email was perused by Google to feed you ads. It didn't read it, but it read keywords. They all do the same thing. So it's nothing to be frightened of. Can you keep your stuff private to you forever? I see a few of you smirking and and probably not is the correct answer. Um, we will go into that someday in the next few weeks after more information is available uh, about what the Americans are going to do uh, with regard to forcing everyone, everyone, to make their technologies available to the government unencumbered. It's coming. It's coming. And I wrote a little troll message on a, on a message board last week saying basically that if the American government does this, I'm going to be freaking rich. You know why? Because I will start an encryption company and I will base it in the Republic of Ireland where the American government has no reach and I will offer my encryption services to anybody in the world for a small fee. I can do that. And if you think it's not going to happen, guess again. It will happen. As soon as they do this, people will flee Gmail and Yahoo Mail and Outlook Mail and MSN Mail and all of the other ones that are essentially hosted in Silicon Valley. And they will use email um, services from Ireland, from Germany, uh, from the Ukraine, <laughs> okay, from Indonesia, from Japan, all of these places have really robust encryption technologies, which all of us will go and get. We don't want an entity like a government to be able to surreptitiously, and that's the way it will be, surreptitiously, demand from the tech company that they are able to see our stuff. How would you find all these other companies that are? Oh, they will. <laughs> as soon as this happens, 
um, that they they will take out television ads. <laughs> they will be in newspapers. They will be in magazines. They will be in word of mouth. They will pop up on your screen. We're here to help you. But we'll get more into that in the next couple of weeks when I know more about what's happening because I'm get the more I look at it, the more angry I'm getting. And uh, this will be, in a couple of weeks, a really fun rant. <laughs> if you know, you want one of my rants, this will be one of the fun ones. Apparently the RCMP were given a, Blackberry gave them a key for... Yeah, yeah. They've been monitoring us for a couple of years now. Yeah, um, that's, that's for Blackberry. But if you remember back a couple of years, uh, the Indian government uh, demanded from BlackBerry that they hand over the encryption keys uh, for the messaging service and BlackBerry made a big brouhaha about saying how they would never do that. But the laws in our country are quite different. They're quite different. And so um, legal entities can force companies like uh, Research in Motion or BlackBerry to hand over the keys to the kingdom and insist that they tell no one. It must remain secret. Would this involve local email people or is this strictly web, web mail people? Uh, well, if, if, you, uh, if you have a local company like, uh, like Source Cable, uh, you can log into an email server um, that is on the web um, and if you look carefully when you log in you will be logging in as HTTPS hypertext transfer hypertext transfer protocol secure okay and so uh, they they have a set of encryption keys that they've purchased for their email servers um, that um, nobody is supposed to be able to see your stuff Will they have to hand the keys over? Oh, probably. Okay, so here I am back at uh, my... Uh, um, let's go back to Gmail here. Um, now that's, that's the mail part of it. I'm going to get back into um, Google again. And let's look at... Uh, some of the other services that they have. Now, essentially Google Drive is, is the old system of what we used to call Google Docs. Okay, uh, and so you can make uh, documents in uh, the dot .doc format, the Excel format, the presentation format. They're all available in Google Drive. And you can make documents on, um, right on the web page or you can upload them from your computer to your drive, Google Drive, and store them there. And you, once you've made them, you can download them. Um, okay, this, this uh, is a couple of old documents I made. Um, no, that's an executable, I don't want to touch that. Uh, here's a PDF um, that I uploaded to Google Docs so I could get at it anytime I needed it. Uh, there's information on there about companies that I was doing business with. Um, so it's all here. You can put in photos. Um, you can upgrade your storage. I have uh, 15 gigabytes available to me because I've been using uh, Gmail for umpteen hundred years and so every year they give me a little bit more storage um, if you open an account I think you get five gigs right off the top but that's 15 gigs and that's lots that's plenty how do you open that account um, just when you is the account the one you use for gmail um, what you do let's let's go back here for the storage I mean yeah let's go back here I'm going to sign out. And I'm going to go 
back here. Okay, so we're back to our Google page. If I did not have uh, an account, a Google account, a Gmail account, um, a Gmail account is part of a Google account. Okay, so it has all kinds of other services besides mail. If I click on the sign in, if I did not have an account, it would say, do you want to make one? Okay, if I tried to sign in with a different account, it will say, well, you don't, we don't show any different accounts for you, make a new one. And so, if you don't have a, uh, a Google account, it will know that on your computer and allow you to make a new one. Um, and so, that's how you would um, do that. Um, and so, uh, at the bottom of the page here, it's, it's giving you an indication of all kinds of things that you can do. Um, you, you've got mail, you've got maps, okay? Uh, maps is really great. You can, you can log into maps and you can find local things or you can find far away things. Uh, with a street ad address, it will even give you a picture of the building that you're going to go to. Um, there's your YouTube account, your Drive, pictures, um, and also uh, Google Chrome. All of these things are available to you in Google. Uh, I've signed out, so I'm not going to sign back in again. Let's uh, do Yahoo. I don't have a Yahoo account. I've never wanted one um, because the more and more I hear about things about Yahoo and I've been hearing them for 10 years that uh, someday Yahoo's going to go away. It's making money but not the kind of money that the investors over the years have wanted from the company. And so it's really, really, di they're in a really, really tight spot of being able to get enough money to operate, to get more money to build new stuff, um, and to get money to expand their offerings. Um, so I, I've just never gone near it. Um, but if you're into Yahoo, you can get mail, okay, with a Yahoo account. And once you've got a Yahoo account, these other things can be made uh, special to you. So, for instance, if you sign into your Yahoo account and you're, you're into, into uh, doing your own financial arrangements, Yahoo Finance can be customized to your purposes. So when you log into Yahoo Finance, if you've got a stock portfolio, you can tell Yahoo Finance, here's all the stocks I have, give me real-time updates of whether I'm making or losing money. Okay, those are available. Yahoo Finance is one of the best things about Yahoo. The other one is sports. Yahoo Sports and Yahoo Finance are great. All of the rest of it is garbage, especially the news. Uh, mail it works pretty much the same as Gmail, Google Mail. Uh, let's have a quick boo at MSN. And this is what you would see uh, basically when you log into your MSN page. Um, I have an account, but I can't remember what it is right now. <laughs> but it does give you Outlook.com as mail. Okay? If you have a, um, a Hotmail address, it works in Outlook.com. Um, you have Skype which is um, basically communications in real time um, with voice and video. Okay, if you have a camera for your computer, you can do voice and video if you have a good, strong internet connection. Um, you, have, you can use Microsoft Office if you have made a minimum payment to it for account usage, and that will give you um, 
Microsoft Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. Okay, it's not much, like only five bucks a month or something like that. Oh, I think it's $9.99. I, I think it's $60 a year. Yeah, it's cheaper when you pay yeah. it, right? Yeah. But I wonder if it's worth doing it because it's updated, right? Yeah, it's, you get all of the latest features that they're going to give you from Microsoft Office, but it's not going to be anywhere near the, uh, the Microsoft Office program itself where um, but I've said this before Microsoft Office if you have the full program you know Microsoft Office 2016 the, the full CD DVD and you've loaded it on your computer at best you will only use 5% of the capabilities of that program at the best why buy it when for a small fee you can use Microsoft Office in the form that you want to use it and not have to worry about, well, am I wasting my time trying to learn these other things you will never use. You will never use them. So um, 60 bucks a year is not bad. Uh, OneDrive is another one that's, that's uh, the same as your, your uh, Gmail Drive. Uh, that's a place to store stuff. Um, OneDrive is not as good about giving you free storage as uh, Gmail as uh, Google is, but uh, I think you get a gig for openers, and and five gigs after that is not a lot of money. I mean, and then you can you can buy an unlimited storage for OneDrive if you want to. What is the OneNote for? Um, OneNote it, here again is a is a uh, program uh, that's part of Microsoft Office and it's a standalone product as well. Uh, OneNote is like a note taker, but it talks to all of these other programs. So that um, if, you, uh, if you're using um, Outlook Mail and uh, you confirm an appointment in Outlook Mail, that will be imported into OneNote as a, um, as a reminder that you have an appointment. And when it comes time for the appointment, uh, the way, depending on the way you've set it up, it'll remind you in the morning, it'll remind you an hour before. Uh, if, you, if you tied it to maps, uh, it will tell you how far away you are from your appointment when you have to leave your home. Okay, all of that stuff. And that's all tied in with OneNote. Now, Microsoft Maps. Please don't use that. Please don't use that. <laughs> You, even if you don't have a Google account, you can use the map service without it. But to use, um, MSN is not responding, blah. Let's try a recover page. I get that all the time. <laughs> yeah, that's Microsoft for you. Okay, so there's, there's maps. I'm just gonna click on it here and see what we get. Come on, it's trying to load, trying to load, trying to load. Yep, there we go. Okay, so it's, it's um, the thing I don't like about um, Microsoft Maps is they are not as complete as Google Maps. They have never invested in the local technologies and uh, in, in local services the way Google has. Every couple of years, Google will send cars to Hamilton, Ancaster, um, um, Benbrook, everywhere. They will send cars and they will drive every road we have. And they will find all the new ones that are in construction right now. And they will drive every single one of these roads. They will update what they didn't have before. They will put in the new routes and roads. Um, and um, if you can't find a street right now because, it's, um, because it was only designated six months ago in a new survey, go back in, a, in another six months. You'll find it. It'll be there. That's Google going to these locations and updating their maps. 
lazy bastards at uh, Bing are not doing that. If, if anything, they're scarfing Google Maps to get their updates. Okay, they're scarfing Google Maps to get their updates. Um, so, I'm never happy about Maps. And the other thing that uh, that MSN does that um, you may find um, really, really annoying is their search engine is Bing. And if you've ever used Bing as the default search engine, you will find that it doesn't tell you very much that's important. You're searching for something and you may have to go the first three through the first three pages of search to start finding the entries that you really, really want because Bing has sold the, those first two pages of entries to product. Okay, they're all product. They're not anything you need to know. Um, and so the, uh, the, that's, that's MSN, that's Bing. And as you can probably see, I'm not happy with it. Not happy at all. Um, okay. Do we have any other kinds of search engines that we can use? As it turns out, yes, we do. Um, if you do a search on Google for list search engines, You'll get a list of search engines, comprehensive list, the search engine list. All right, well, let's have a look at that. Um, I'm looking for one in particular. I, it should be there, but I haven't, I haven't been on it for a long time. Um, that was called Dogpile. <laughs> but it was a great search engine. They had algorithms like Google that uh, allowed them to search, allowed you to search the internet the way you wanted to, to look for the things you wanted to, like very particular kinds of documents, very particular kinds of photographs, um, very particular kinds of maps, and very particular kinds of stories. Um, Dogpile was great for that. Um, we're not getting anywhere with this. Uh, now, ICQ, um, in its earliest form, uh, was a communications application, okay? Like uh, Skype, uh, where you could do video and, and uh, voice chat. Um, it expanded later on into, into being able to search for things. They needed the money is what they needed, but it didn't work out well. Um, let me try the search engines again. Uh. Okay, there's Dogpile right there. Dogpile search. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, let me see if I can get it to come up. And you can see that it's a, it's a stripped down version. Um, it, uh, you can search for images and videos, news, shopping sites. It even has a white pages. Um, and that white pages is tied to the white pages. Okay, they've paid for that. So um, I believe your phone number's in there. Your address isn't right, but your phone number's not. <laughs> if you go looking. You'll find yourself, but your address is wrong. Um, so, Delaware. Mm -hmm. Delaware. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's Dogpile. There are a couple of others. Um, DuckDuckGo is another one. Um, and DuckDuckGo was pretty popular for a while. Uh, there it is, DuckDuckGo, down at the bottom here. 
It still is a popular search engine because it it um, it does give you some alternatives to Google. So if Google is spitting out results that are close but not quite there, you can go to Dogpile or DuckDuckGo, put in the same search term, and and you will get um, search results that are a little different and that may be closer to what you're looking for. So there's three search engines that you can use. Um, and I have found over the years that uh, that they they do this where they will if if you're not quite getting the search results you want you can use these other two as as alternatives and it usually gets you closer to the search you're looking for. Um, okay, we've pretty much beaten up um, these services that are available. Uh, any questions about services on the internet, such as finding things or? How do you know that, I mean, if I've seen DuckDuckGo, I would have gone to get right and closed it. How do you know it's real? Um, because I, to I told you. <laughs> and, um, Good answer, but that's <laughs> And um, you, you could even do a search uh, for, uh, you would put in DuckDuckGo and then the word review, okay? And if there's something wrong with DuckDuckGo, the reviewers will tell you. The reviewers will tell you. Great for this, crap for that, or just plain crap, okay? The reviewers will tell you everything you need to go to know. And it's, that's the same holds true for any service or product you're looking for. Music sites, they tell you which ones are loaded with, you know, don't, don't yeah. go on LimeWire, Lime whatever. Yeah, Bear Share and all of those. Bear Share, yeah, that's, yeah. that's how um, you know the reviews. Yeah, and, and uh, it, there are sites that if you go on them looking for stuff, mm -hmm. um, uh, Pirate Bay is one. You can still get at the Pirate Bay. Um, but the thing about that site is that uh, if you're looking for something and you find it, you can also find a review of the file with it. And so if there's six or seven reviews about the file, read them all. Because there may be a couple, in, a couple of reviews might say, well, I thought there was malware in this file, so be careful. Well, if you're, if you're thinking about that kind of thing and you don't want to have anything to do with it, it's good to know. Okay, this movie file may have malware. It, it set off my detector. Okay, that's a good thing to know. Don't, don't do that file unless you're really, really careful. Um, so the Pirate Bay and um, what's the other one? Kick-Ass Torrents is another one. Kick-Ass, is, it's, it's pretty tough to get at anymore. You gotta know where you're going. But Kick-Ass Torrents was another one that would give you downloads um, with reviews that you could look at and say, well, this, this file works, this file's bad, this person is uploading crap, um, don't go there. So reviews um, for products and services. Um, there, there are review sites like Yelp. If you Yelp, Y-E-L-P, all right, uh, which are, we're supposed to be in the local review business. So if you wanted a, a particular uh, product from a particular store, you could go to Yelp, um, look at the store, and see what the reviews were from other patrons of the store. Yeah, it's pretty difficult to use sometimes. Um, but there are other sites out there like it. The review sites. Um, if you were uh, if you were big time into um, into uh, fine dining, okay, where once a month you would take a hundred bucks that you didn't know what to do with, and um, convince somebody else with a hundred dollars they didn't know what to do with, and do a fine dining experience, well, then the place to go to get information about your prospect would be open table.
That's another review site of fine dining. Okay. So it, it you know, if you're talking about 100 bucks, 150 bucks, 200 bucks with the wine, you want to know going in that you're going to have a really great experience. Reviews, reviews from websites uh, like Google, Yelp, Open Table, a lot of them have reviews that if you're going to spend a lot of money to entertain yourself, it better be good. <laughs> Movie review sites, Rotten Tomatoes. Okay, a movie review site. It's called that? It's called Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> if you're going to go to the movie theater with a friend, you're going to drop 50 bucks just inside the door. Okay? And at the end of it, two hours later, you might be disappointed in the movie or the experience. But if you went to some place like Rotten Tomatoes and they said, you know, they, they gave they give a full review of the movie, they, they don't give you uh, spoilers. They don't spoil it for you, but they give you a full review of the movie. Uh, the, the, the stars that are in it and, and the plot line, sort of, and whether it was emotional or not and all of the rest of it you would have a good time at the end of it they they tell you well you're going to have a good time with this one or it's meh or don't waste your money and there's a lot of that going around of don't waste your money um wait six months or even four months and a bad movie will be on hbo <laughs> or it might even be on free tv because they're always looking for bad stuff to put on for free. Um, any other questions about looking for uh, products and services with search engines? I um, just this weekend, uh, my wife and I were out looking for a new shed for our backyard. And I had gotten some information from a neighbor um, about where he bought his. And so I went to their website to have a quick boo. They have nice sheds. Oh yeah, they have nice sheds from the gallery. Really nice stuff. This, you know, you'd love to have anything like that in your backyard. Starting at $6,000. <laughs> now, that's a lot of money. It's a really nice shed. I gotta hand it to him. It is worth the 6000 yeah. Oh. Um, but at the at the end of it all, my wife and I um, went to went with a place that we had looked at last year, um, and I went to their website and I found some things about stuff being on sale, so I went there. Okay. So no, we didn't pay six thousand dollars for a shed, but we did did pay fifty seven hundred. For a shed twice the size and twice as tall. Does it have an internet connection? Hmm? Does it have internet connection? It will have. <laughs> yeah, and it will, and and it will have lights, and it will have plugs. It will have a place for my bench. <laughs> for eighteen thousand dollars, you can have a two-story. Yeah. For eighteen thousand, it's about. The third of the size of a garage in footprint, but it has a second story. Eighteen thousand dollars. Yes. Fold down 
And yeah. only $6,000. That's right. Tiny homes. Tiny homes. Yeah. Uh, they can be made. But, but there you go. That's um, when you're looking around for stuff, um, something as simple as a garden shed, if, you, if you're not into making it yourself, yes, you can find this stuff online locally with the kinds of reviews that, um, um, that make sense to you. I can go back here. Um, oops. Okay, and I can put in the word reviews. Well, there it is right there. Grand River Sheds Reviews. And um, there's a review on, on Facebook. Um, CHCH uh, had them as, uh, as a client um, for a while. Um, there's no suggested reviews, but you could be the first to review if you buy a $6,000 shed. <laughs> So there you go. That's that's the kind of thing. And uh, by the way, when you know these kinds of things, um, the internet has gotten really good about giving you addresses, about giving you pictures of where you're going to go. Okay, the buildings around it, the road around it, what it looks like. So you can put all that stuff uh, in a sheaf of paper. If you don't know where you're going in Brantford, you can figure all of that stuff out ahead of time. It's not worth going. Don't do it. Don't do it. Um, any more questions about the kinds of things that you might be looking for on search engines or the kinds of services that would be available on search engines? Um, how do we know how to look like? How do you find open table or rotten tomatoes? How do you find these sites? Um, for those that don't know about them, have not been indoctrinated into the technology like I have for the last two dozen years. Okay, uh, I knew of Open Table when it was just a small startup and only two guys ran it. Okay, now it's worldwide. Um, but these kinds of things are, um, are available. Um, in Google, you could, you could say restaurant review sites in, the, in your search parameter, and it will give you a list of them. Okay? Movie review sites. Uh, like I said, I've known about Rotten, Rotten Tomatoes for a dozen years. It was one of the earliest... Reviewed by Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Because I've searched for old movies sometimes, and, and um, that, that's there, Rotten Tomatoes. So. Yeah, oh. yeah, they're all there. Um, so, Bob, you could probably just type in Rotten Apples or Rotten Oranges and come up with something, too, wouldn't you? Um, well, I've never tried it, but let's do that. Well, I typed in Rotten Apples, it gave me Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> rotten Apples reviews, apples to apples. And is that a personal review? Is that, I mean, are you getting somebody's personal review? You might love the movie, but they um, labeled it. Yeah, in, in, uh, in some instances, um, the, the reviews are an amalgam of reviews from major newspapers. Okay. In others, um, the reviews are from um, employees of the site. Like Rotten Tomatoes does a lot of their own reviews. Um, and so, uh, but as with any movie review or any product review, um, everything, everything hinges on the worthiness of the reviewer. And if the reviewer um, has an agenda, then 
it becomes pretty plain pretty quickly that they have an agenda that, number one, they don't like this actor, they don't like this director, they don't like this movie studio. It becomes pretty apparent pretty quickly. The major sites that review stuff in cars, movies, all kinds of different kinds of products that you might think of are very, very good. Uh, their editors are very, very good about not allowing um, personal bias to enter a, re a review. Okay, so the, the major sites, yeah, there's usually no personal bias. If it's a stinker, it's a stinker. <laughs> Yeah, uh, but here again, Brenda, if, if you're going to spend 50, 100 bucks and that money was hard won, okay, um, you don't want to be disappointed. And if somebody says to you, Brenda, if you go and do this, you, there's a good chance you will be disappointed. Maybe you'll take your hard won money somewhere else. Yeah. Really yeah. Without personal, yeah, but I didn't get the impression from anything I saw that it was wow. Yeah, it's what you saw was emotional intensity, yeah. and uh, was the the story was weak. Yeah, it was. Weak. Okay. Yeah, but the story itself was weak. They could have done it better. Um, the and yeah, um, <laughs> the the acting. Uh, in some instances, was a little over the top. Yeah. Okay. Um, Yet it won awards. Yeah. So, but if you had, it would be interesting now to go back and look at the reviews after you've seen the movie and see how closely those reviews mirrored your experience. Yeah, and then, if that's the case, then you can go back to those reviewers for something you might want to see in the future because they, there's a good chance that they think like you. So. I'm going to go see the Jungle Book. Yep. <laughs> I, that's, your, that's our speed. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know what? Yeah. If, <laughs> no, I've never seen it. I've always wanted to. So I'm going to. If uh, a story like that like the Jungle Book, as, as Disney envisioned it 50 years ago. How can you go wrong, folk? Yeah. How can you go wrong? And I mean, it's not real animals being hurt. Or no, the but the, the impression is that the panther that is the little boy's friend is a real, live panther. Oh, yeah. It's good drawing. <laughs> okay, and it's not drawing. No, it's... it's, it, it's a lot of it is computer-generated animation. Yeah. Um, did you see The Life of Pi? Yes. Yeah. Okay. 70% of that movie was computer-generated animation for the tiger. Yes, it was. Very good. Yeah. Lion King. Oh, yes. Well, Lion King was a real cartoon. <laughs> I, I like the movies. My but the, the then if you, if you like The Lion King... Yes, I did. Um, the reviews for the uh, theater production, especially the one in Toronto, were absolutely. Oh, that. It was wonderful. Yeah, they were wonderful. Yeah. So, you know, the Jungle Book. If you've seen the Disney. No, I've never seen it. That, if your children saw the Disney. <laughs> no, they didn't. It's one of those things I was always going to go see. Always going to take the kids. Always going to take the grandchildren. Yeah. Always going to read the book and done none of it. So I'm going to go see this movie. Yeah. I think you'll be pleased. We we'll need your review. <laughs> yes, <laughs> we will need your review. All right, folks, that's uh, pretty much it. We've beaten this to death. We're ending a little early, but if you have a question or two, let's try out. Yes. One thing, Bob, with the cloud business. So to my knowledge, I'm not on any clouds or anything, and I'm in local email, blah blah blah. Whenever I go into anything, Libra, Office, or whatever, in down in the taskbar on the right-hand side, Acer Cloud kicks in. The little yeah, in. yeah. Does it want me to go on and open up an account with them? Um, it yes, it does. That's 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 what, that's what it's doing. It's it's trying to get you to open the cloud. Yeah. 
with with uh, with Acer technology. Yeah. Uh, you know what? Don't do it. I'm not going to. No. I'm if you to. want a cloud account, go with the big boys. Yeah. Okay. Go with the big boys. Yeah. I can't go to uh, iCloud because I don't have an OS account, so they wouldn't let me go into the cloud when I started putting music on. But yeah. So big deal. You know. Big deal. Yeah. <laughs> Move on. Something else. Yeah. Anything else? How do you block access to file folders, programs? Blocking access to file folders okay. and programs. Um, in um, when you're in an administrator account, you can't. Can't you password protect them? Um, you can password protect documents. Okay. Uh, but as uh, if you're if you're the administrator on the computer, um, by definition, you're supposed to be able to see everything. Okay, if uh, you have uh, a standard account for a user uh, that uh, you've given this account for, there are probably ways for you to disable certain kinds of programs um, that they would only be able to use uh, sandbox and not a, an Internet Explorer. So they could click on Internet Explorer and it won't open, but if they click on Sandbox, Internet Explorer will open sandboxed. So nothing can damage the computer. Okay, but you can do that in a standard account as administrator. Would you do that in 10? I, mean... I don't know how to do it in 10. No. no maybe, maybe. But it's, as a standard account goes, um, there are lots of things that you can do to limit access to certain dangerous things. Okay. Or yes. Stuff, like medical or personal. Yeah. Well, here again, you you password protect it. You password protect it. I think you can password uh, protect folders too, but uh, I'm not just exactly sure how to do it right off the top of my head. But if you if you look it up, I think you'll find it. Yes. What? Actually, is Microsoft upgrading when they say do not shut down your computer? Microsoft upgrading program. What are they actually doing? Um, they are in in fact um, upgrading um, the basic guts of Windows, and that's why it's so dangerous to shut the computer off when it's doing that because you may shut it off right at a point where it's about to write something to the hard drive that the computer will need forever. It's just they've made a change in it, that's all. But if you shut the computer off while it's doing that, well, it won't have that information, and you will have made a brick. You seem to be doing a lot of updates. Yeah, there, there have been a lot of updates lately, um, but um, they're being more and more and more proactive uh, about protecting you from the nasties out there and there are more and more and more nasties and even some of the older nasties are being rewritten for Windows 10. Why do people do that? It's all about the money. Oh, it's money. Yes. It's all about the money. Okay, folks, that's it. Thank you so much for coming. I'll have this up as soon as I can. That's Computer Club lesson for today. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.